Hey there, I'm a GI doctor, and if you've ever worked in a hospital or in healthcare, you might have heard the stereotype or the joke that GI often says that a patient having an active GI bleed is too unstable for a scope. Why does GI say this? I often wondered this myself when I was an internal medicine resident. A patient being unstable means that their heart rate is high and their blood pressure is low. Often they're in shock. But why would GI say that someone who's actively bleeding is too unstable for a scope? Aren't they unstable because of the bleeding ulcer in their stomach? Losing blood will drop your blood pressure and raise your heart rate. Wouldn't scoping the patient fix them and make them stable? Sometimes that is true, and if a patient continues to have bloody bowel movements and continues to have low blood pressures and high heart rates, we might have to scope them while they're unstable. This happens in variceal bleeds in patients with liver cirrhosis and in some arterial ulcer bleeds. But it's actually pretty rare because the majority of GI bleeds stop on their own, especially with adequate in-hospital treatment with an IV PPI, resuscitation with blood transfusion and fluids, and fixing anything that's wrong with the patient that might make it hard for them to clot their blood, like low platelet levels, for example. Believe it or not, it's estimated that 80% of GI bleeds stop on their own, which seems crazy to me. You might wonder, why do we need GI then? Well, even though the bleed might stop once on its own, it's at a very high risk of bleeding again. For example, if you have an ulcer in your stomach, the stomach lining has eroded down, formed the ulcer. And if there's a blood vessel in the middle of that ulcer, let's say it bled and then stopped bleeding on its own. If that blood vessel is still visible in the bed of that ulcer, there's up to an 80% chance of it bleeding again. So GI needs to go in, scope that patient, burn it, clip it, make the vessel stop. In addition, there's actually been a lot of studies looking at the timing of GI bleed. For example, one study looked at scoping a patient within 12 hours of when they present to the hospital for the GI bleed versus scoping the patient 12 to 24 hours later versus scoping them more than 24 hours later. And when that study looked at patients in all three of those groups, it found that length of hospitalization, the mortality rate, and the number of blood transfusions needed was not significantly different whether you scoped right away versus waited a little bit versus waited even longer. And the group that was scoped right away within 12 hours of presenting to the hospital was actually at a higher risk of needing a repeat EGD in 48 hours. Likely because if you scope too soon, their stomach's gonna be full of blood, they're gonna be bleeding, and you won't be able to see very well. So you need to go in later after the bleeding has stopped. So scoping too soon also puts you at a risk of needing another procedure, which EGDs are low risk, but they're not without any risk at all. So there could actually be more risk in some cases if you scope within 12 hours, especially if a patient's unstable. When we scope patients, we also need to sedate them in many cases so that they can tolerate the procedure and sedating them risks dropping their blood pressure even further. So that's even another reason to avoid scoping an unstable patient if we can avoid it. Everything in medicine is on a case by case basis, but hopefully this clarifies our thinking a little bit. People joke that GI just never wants to come in in the middle of the night. To some degree, that's true. But if someone truly needs it, we'll come in in the middle of the night. But what you gotta remember is in many hospitals, coming in in the middle of the night means that you're gonna have less staff to help with the scope or to supervise the patient. So there's more risk of complications associated with that. So if we know that outcomes of the scope are similar if we scope six hours after presentation versus 14 hours after presentation, it might make more sense to not scope the patient at midnight when they come in, let them get resuscitated, get blood products, get IV fluids, and then scope them at 8 a.m. the next morning when we have more staff, more people to help, and lower risk of complications. Especially given that we have studies showing that this delay would not worsen patient outcomes. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about similar subjects to this or anything about GI, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to make a video about it in the future.